We've built a really one-of-a-kind blue ROV that has a very unique set of sensors that allow it to have better sonar-based perception and mapping capability than any other blue ROV that exists right now. The real innovation here is the autonomy algorithms, the perceptual algorithms, and taking existing off-the-shelf components and just putting them together in a new way that allows us to do things that haven't been done before. I'm Brendan Englot. Uh, I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering at Stevens Institute of Technology. We're in Davidson Laboratory. This is a facility of really interesting historical significance that has been used for hydrodynamic model testing and the development of a whole variety of different ship designs over the decades. Today, we're using the facility for a rather unconventional purpose. We're not doing hydrodynamic model testing, but we are turning the tank into an underwater robotics proving ground there are some of the toughest problems in autonomy living in that domain, uh, allowing underwater robots to have the same situational awareness that we have um, above the surface. There are a lot of things that make that a hard problem because of the, um, the marine environment, the fact that we can't use RF signals to communicate in the ocean. There's no GPS. It's very difficult to use LIDAR. Uh, cameras can only see a few inches, even with very good illumination. So one of the um, really tough challenges that we've worked on with this robot is uh, building improved situational awareness and navigation that relies completely on acoustic sensing. It starts with an off-the-shelf product. Uh, the Blue ROV is a product that you can buy, but it's highly customizable. And my students and I have done a lot of the customization. So we have changed the way that all of the different payloads are configured. Um, we have added a lot of additional sensing and computing capabilities. The specific test we're doing today, um, we're doing in a very controlled environment for a specific purpose. We do often take our robots out into regional waterways and have them deal with all the complexities of real world environments. But today, we're really interested in testing a very unique um, perception capability that we really only have on this one platform here at Stevens. And it's the ability to take two different multi-beam imaging sonars, um, each oriented 90 degrees to the other, and fuse their images together in order to build dense 3D point clouds of underwater objects. We constructed a special object uh, with a unique 3D geometry that would really uh, allow us to test all the different aspects of this uh, framework's performance. We um, placed that object in the tank, and today we're testing our ability to build these dense 3D reconstructions in real time. On the screen, you were seeing the two different sonar images that contribute to that 3D reconstruction. One of them comes from a horizontally oriented sonar with one planar slice of the environment and the other from a vertically oriented sonar with the other planar slice. And the observations from those two different slices are then fused together. And what you were seeing beneath that was the real time 3D reconstructed point cloud of the object we placed in the tank. And you were seeing a real time six degree of freedom estimate of the exact state of the robot while it was driving around that structure. Today, we're using a joystick to drive and control the vehicle just to ensure that we get the best data possible for our experimental study. That data will help us develop better perception and mapping capabilities. In the future, we would like the robot to know the locations of all the obstacles in its environment. It needs to know its own location, its position and orientation relative to those obstacles. It needs to be able to build that map, keep it up to date as things move, track its location with high accuracy, um, and also perform path planning and collision avoidance to complete the objectives of its mission. There are a lot of offshore fish farms around the world, but very few, if any, in the United States. The work we're doing right now is actually funded by uh, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture with the purpose of helping develop technology that would allow us to have greater proliferation of offshore fish farming in the U.S. A robot like this could be a proof of concept for a resident autonomous system that could be there docked at the fish farm and operate 24 seven, helping to clean and maintain it and keep it in a good state of health. And that also goes for other types of offshore infrastructure as well. Offshore renewable energy infrastructure, like offshore wind farms, for example, where having resident autonomous systems that could clean and inspect um, these offshore structures might be very helpful and allow them to operate more safely, reliably, and, and at lower cost as well. Thank you.